So, like, how long have you been going to, you know, the clinics to get medicated with the opioids? Uh, I've been on this program here for about three years. Three years? Yeah, yeah, three years. And so you get medicated every day? Every single day. I mean, you can miss a day, but I try not to. So why do you come and get medicated? Uh, well, first of all, I don't want to be sick, you know, because once you get on methadone, you still have that opiate addiction. But the methadone just provides a stability. Like if you want to have a job and, and build your life back up to a normal life, that's how it's used, you know. You can get that. You can get structure and stability back in your life. So do you plan to get off of the opiates or no? Yeah, I do. Eventually, um, you know, I did relapse, so it kind of took me a step backwards. But, yeah, I would like to get to a point where, you know, I got everything straight in my life, got what I need out of the program, and I can get off it. What, what's your drug of choice? Uh, heroin. Heroin? No other drug of choice with it? I mean, I do coke sometimes, but mainly smack. Okay, what's the positiveness about the, um, you know, the program and you getting medicated? What's the positive side, the positive side of the program for you? Um, for me, like, when I decided to get clean, it was having the ability to not have to chase dope all day. To be able to go get a job, you know, um, get back in with my family, do right pretty much. And, uh, you know, once you get that, then you can decide to get on the program. So, what are the things that happen around the project? Like, this place, I see a lot of things happening that aren't so, you know, that are kind of sketchy. Can you enlighten us on what's sketchy and what's happening around when you come outside of being medicated? I mean, if you're directly in front or next to the program, this sidewalk, the sidewalk on the side, there's nothing. But once you cross that street, everything, everything you can imagine. Can I buy there. opiates right here? Uh, can I purchase it? Yeah. Methadone, yeah, but not really dope up here. You know, because it's like a methadone program. Everything else, yeah. Can I yeah. buy bars, zannies? Absolutely. Can I buy perks? Absolutely. Right outside this clinic, I can buy those things. Absolutely. Yeah, if you ride down the street with your windows down, people will ask you. You don't find a problem with that? You're getting medicated, you're getting self-help, and then you um, come right outside to a war to, you know, you can buy drugs? I mean, it, it really doesn't bother me because I just sort of ignore it. I get medicated, I go home. Um, I guess other people can see it as a problem. But, I mean, really, I don't. I don't. I mean, I think the police should do something about it. I've once heard that you could, when you get medicated, you could take your medication and spit it back into the bottle and go outside and sell it to a person. Is that true? I don't know. I Have you heard of that happening? I've heard of it, but I don't know anybody that's done that. So, do you think the government wants you to get clean, or do they want you to stay on this program? Um, I think they want you to stay on the program. They're getting so much money from the insurance companies. I mean, when you talk to your counselor, it's like, you know, every month they revise your quote-unquote treatment plan. And the way they word those treatment plans, it's as if they're planning on you being on that program forever. You know, and... Um, I mean, if they did, if they if they wanted you to get clean, they would kick you off the program after. Do you think it's a war on drugs, opioids? You think it's a war? I mean, they could call that. I don't think it's a winnable war. Is there? There's so much money. I mean, you see these the dealers nowadays making twenty thousand a day, thirty thousand a day. I, I don't think the government's got a fucking ice cube's chance in hell at winning that war. So that war is never winnable? No. Do you think there are still drug dealers out here on the corner that are selling dope? Yeah, hell yeah. So it's still existing, even though they are programs? Oh yeah, absolutely. They didn't put the drug dealer out of no, business? No, no, The programs themselves, it seems like whoever's running the programs are drug dealers. I mean, you come down here early in the morning, there's a line around the building. It's like a You know? And it's, it, people are still in there fucked up, you know? it's. I mean, I started out with painkillers, you know, Percocets, Oxys, and it got to a point where I'm spending 300 a day, 
a friend of mine who's already using heroin. It's like, man, go get a 50 year wrong. Good for two days. Right down the street, got a 50 bag of raw. This was like 06. Once I did that, it was a wrap. It was a wrap. What are the ways that you used heroin? What were the ways? Did you uh, sniff it? First, I was it? sniffing, and then about two, three months into it, I started shooting. So you were banging? Yeah. Yeah. And what age are you now? I'm 30, about to turn 31. And the last time you used other than the program. So on the subject of jobs in, in the inner city, I mean, are there jobs around here? Not really. I mean, if you're lucky enough to, own, to know the owner of a carry out or something, maybe, but I mean, if you look around, all these factories and stores are all boarded up. Yeah. So, ain't nobody out here. So right here. what you're saying around here, there's no manufacturing? <laughs> no, hell no. I mean, no. you and I, we can look across the street and see that there's like a massive yeah, real estate. Er, the old factory over there. Yeah, yeah. That's nothing. And it was just burnt down. Yeah. Nothing in it. There's another one right in front of it. So it's nothing. just, it's a it's a, a skeleton of industry here. No yeah. opportunity. And, you know, the very interesting thing we were talking about is the clinic right here, how it's almost outside of it, a hub of getting anything you want almost. Yeah. Can you describe a little bit of what's outside of the clinic and what you could get? Um, crack, bean, zannies, clonidines, clonopins, pretty much any type of pill. Uh, methadone, sometimes heroin, not so much. You gotta go a couple blocks down for that. Um, but yeah, pretty much anything, anything under the sun. Clinic, we're right in front. Can you describe just the magnitude of it is and comparing it to other uh, clinics, not just here in Baltimore, but perhaps the United States? This clinic here is the largest methadone clinic under one roof in the United States. You know, there's other clinics that have multiple locations that might have more people, but as far as one location, this is the largest methadone clinic. In what, what do you think about, how, how many people do you think come in and out of this clinic per day? They, they say there's only over just over 2,000 my you know I'm in the 4,000s and there's people whose numbers up on the board when they're in waiting to get dosed they're in 8,000s now 9,000s per day yeah so wow. I mean you got to figure people switch programs and die and move away so I mean let's say conservatively maybe like 6,000 5,000 I'm not buying at 2,000 you think there's Number. a lot of money to be made with the people who run this yeah. and own it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean... The government subsidies that you think they, they take advantage of? Absolutely. I mean, there's... You know, there was a program in here that they were helping people get on where they would pay for your, pay your rent, like get you in a house and pay your rent. Yeah. I knew a lady who was on that program. So what you're telling me is that if you came on to a program at this clinic that... The clinic, or with help from the government? Yeah, yeah, like would they they were give you housing. People. Yeah, yeah, they were at one point. I don't know if they do it anymore. Give you but um, yeah, I personally knew a lady. What would you call Baltimore? I mean, would you call this a crisis? This opioid crisis? I mean, for, first of all, we're in front of a clinic, the, one of the largest clinics you're saying in the country. I mean, would you say we're going through a crisis that needs to be told? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think. You know, the only time it gets attention is when somebody overdoses, but they're not really looking at what's causing the overdoses. And, and it, I'm not saying, it, you know, heroin or whatever, but the availability of it, it's so easy to get. And it's, you know, I mean, it's honestly, there's probably more, more dope shops you know, places you can buy heroin than liquor stores in this city. Well, now, yeah. we all know this is big money, yeah. running this shop, um, and you were saying it's the largest in the country. Do you think there's possibly Medicare fraud or healthcare fraud in this? Um, I... Well, I'm going to stop you one second. What I've seen here, I've seen Bentleys, I've seen yeah. very expensive cars come yeah. in and out of this facility, and... What I've been told by some is or those are the people who may run it or the doctors or they're somewhat tied into this clinic. 
I mean, do you do you think it's weird that somebody's driving a um, expensive, very expensive car? No, like I said, I mean, it's to me, it's just another form of drug dealing. It's okay. just like a legal form. So this is a legal yeah. form of drug dealing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the biggest dope line in the city. <laughs> Come here 5.15 in the morning. The biggest dope line in the city. What do you think about the country? Yeah. From your yeah, experience, I mean, like, yeah, what do you... Yeah, 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 do mean, you think this is a significant spot right here where we're absolutely, sitting? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the amount of people on this program is mind-boggling. 